Hello and welcome to the setup guide for Heroes of Might and Magic 1, a strategic quest. In this video I'll explain how to achieve the relatively perfect setup for this game, as well as go into some background detail on why it needs to be done that way. If something is incorrect or missing from the guide, post it in the comments and updates will be put into the video description. So let's start with a version overview. So Heroes of Might and Magic 1, a strategic quest, the strategy game that started the well-known Heroes of Might and Magic spin-off franchise, was originally released by New World Computing in 1995 for the DOS operating system. It received two patches from version 1.0 to 1.2, and the big difference from the previous titles, like Might and Magic World of Zine, in terms of technology, was that this game actually used PCM sound, which is kind of like uncompressed wave audio. It did not use MIDI at all, at least to my knowledge. So that's quite interesting in and of itself, and right here you can see the uh, setup screen for it. So if you go into the sound card configuration and choose pretty much any sound card, let's uh, let's eight, you can see that the DOS version actually offers three different audio quality options. There's the 8-bit mono, it says fastest, but at this point in time it is pretty much useless. Then 8-bit stereo, which, good quality? No, not really. <laughs> and then there's 16-bit stereo, which is somewhat decent. It doesn't actually say this, but all of these options are 22.05 kHz sampling rate, and the place where all of these sound files are kept are on the CD itself in the special files with special extensions that identify them. So the 8-bit mono tracks are in 0.82m files, which you can decode as meaning 8-bit 22.05 kHz mono sound, then 0.82s is the 8-bit 22.05 kHz stereo, and 0.62s, which is 16-bit 22.05 Hz, well, kilohertz, stereo. So those are the sound options for the original DOS version. Then, one year later, in 1996, New World Computing released the Windows 95 version of this game. I believe the original is already version 1.1, and then it's received a patch to version 1.2. And the sound options in that release are the major difference between the two releases. The Windows 95 version had two sound options. It retained the 22.05 kHz 8-bit mono sound as a kind of a fallback, but the disc also contained 44.1 kHz 24-bit stereo Redbook CD audio. That is a lot better sound quality than anything in the DOS version. In addition to that, the Windows 95 version had a map editor, including a random map generator that is fully functional within it. It also included a few more maps than what shipped with the DOS version. And it also included an ability to run the game in a window, complete with a window-style menu to select all the in-game options. It also included some window scaling options for different resolutions, and it also had alpha blended building fade in animation as opposed to alternating pixel blend in, as in the DOS version. 
Although unfortunately the Windows 95 version also had a black and white only cursor instead of a gold cursor like in the DOS version due to certain technical issues. Then, one year later, still, in 1997, Neural Computing released Heroes of Might and Magic Compendium, which was a bundle of Heroes of Might and Magic 1 and Heroes of Might and Magic 2. This was a very interesting release and a pretty strange one when it comes to Heroes of Might and Magic 1. It had a DOS version of the game, but it was version 1.3, which is not actually available as a patch, and as far as I know, the only difference in it is the setup, where it removed the 16-bit audio option, because the CD didn't have enough space to hold the 16-bit music, Instead, it actually included the Redbook CD audio. Except the problem is that the DOS version never had the ability to read CD audio. So, the only reason why the CD audio was there, I believe, is that it would be able to be used with the Windows 95 version, the original, because once installed you can use the Compendium version to play the audio, or for using CD players, just for playing back the music itself. So, yes, as far as I know, otherwise it was the same as the DOS version. Then sometime later still, there was a Mac OS port. It was based on the Windows version, it didn't include a map editor, but there's very little information on it, and Later on, there were also other Heroes bundles, after the Compendium. Things like Millennium Edition, Platinum Edition, etc. All of them, in as far as I know, included the Windows 95 version of the game. And then fast forward to today, and this game is shipped on GOG.com right now. Their version was previously based on the Compendium DOS version, but then, after some time, they realized that it was a really bad idea, since it only supported 8-bit audio. So now they changed that to the original DOS version, and included the 16-bit audio. But that's still a far cry from the 24-bit, 44.1 kHz audio in the Windows version. So the optimal version is definitely the Windows 95 version. The audio quality increase is very noticeable, especially on sound effects. And the other additions that I talked about are also nice to have, especially the random map generator. Now, there's a reason why GOG doesn't ship the Windows version, and that is the fact that the Windows 95 version only runs on Windows 95. Well, to be fair, it runs on Windows 9X, not necessarily just Windows 95. But yes, it doesn't work on newer Windows, any Windows NT version, or on Wine either. At least not yet. The reason why it doesn't work is that at the time, New World Computing made use of the Miles Sound System from Rad Game Tools for handling audio. And in 1996, it depended on the audio being multithreaded. So basically, as far as I can tell, the way it works is that it starts waiting for a sound to finish playing, and only then it starts playing the actual sound. So, multi-threaded, it's not a big deal, because the sound will get started, and then it will finish playing, and everything will continue. But after that, in Windows NT, uh, they made everything single-threaded like that, because the multi-threadedness caused instability. So the result is that on newer Windows versions, the game waits infinitely for a sound that never started playing to begin with. 
And also of note is that at the time, in 1995 and 1996, the CD audio mixing was typically analog. So the way it worked is that the game would send sounds to the operating system, then it would forward the sounds to the sound card, and the sound card would interface directly with the CD player, and the CD player is what would mix together the sounds and the music from the CD. Nowadays CD audio is all digital and the mixing is done by the sound card, not the CD player. So how do you make the Windows 95 version work on modern systems? Well, the only answer that we have right now is virtualization. So in this example I will be using VirtualBox since it's cross-platform and free, although other solutions should generally work as well. There's some specifics to how VirtualBox handles it. Uh, here is the VirtualBox sound options. If you go into the emulated sound card list, there are two applicable sound devices here. The Sound Blaster 16 ISA and the Intel AC97 sound cards. Both of them work on Windows 9X, but there is something to note here. The Sound Blaster 16 emulation does not appear to work for Heroes of Mind Magic 1A Strategic Quest, as the game will believe the audio is playing, but it won't actually be heard. Maybe because there were no drivers for the Sound Blaster 16 released after Windows 95. So it was stuck with older VXD driver model instead of the new Windows driver model or WDM. In any case, the AC97 is actually the only option on VirtualBox that is actually usable for our purposes here. However, as a polar opposite to the Sound Blaster 16 emulation, there were no drivers for AC97 released for operating systems before Windows Millennium Edition. Making Windows Millennium Edition the only choice for making the game work properly on VirtualBox. Now, another note. The um, CD audio support in VirtualBox is actually very rudimentary at this point in time. It doesn't read physical CDs right, so in our case they have to be made into virtual images. I'll talk a bit about how to set that up later, but at this point I want to say that in order to set everything up, the prerequisites to that are first to have VirtualBox, at least in this guide we'll use that, then have Windows Millennium Edition, either a CD or its image. And then obviously to have the Heroes Might Magic 1 Windows 95 version, either the original or from the compilations other than Heroes Might Magic Compendium. This has to be an image. Then optionally you can also grab the Heroes Might Magic 1 1.2 patch. And then, to also set up everything correctly, you will need generic VESA drivers. I will have the links to all of these utilities in the description of the video, by the way. Then, Windows Installer 2.0. And lastly, Daemon Tools 3.47, which was the last version that worked in Windows 9X. Now, to prepare the Heroes of My Magic 1 images, you first need to make sure that they are in a format that allows saving CD audio. ISO does not. The most popular and common way to save CD audio is a QBIN file pair. Well, there are others too, like MDF and MDS, that works too. On Linux, you could use a program called CDRDAO, to generate those files from an actual CD. And in general, getting correct Heroes of Might Magic 1 disk images is by far the hardest part of the setup. But once you have that, 
you need to actually get the files inside the virtual machine somehow. Note that there are no VirtualBox guest editions for Windows Millennium Edition. However, you can mount CD images, which, as far as I know, is the easiest way to transfer files to the virtual machine. So, how to do that? Well, I typically use CD burning software for that. So, let me give you an impression of how that would work. Uh, open K3B, but other CD burning software should work as well. So, you have the CD burner, you need to create a data project, and then into it you need to put all the prerequisite files that I mentioned before. So I have all of them prepared in one place already, so I'll just drop them in, including the QBIN or QIMG or MDFMDS file pair for Hero Smart Magic 1 itself. So once you have that, create an ISO image from that. So I'll only create image and I'll put it into somewhere recognizable and let's call it HOMM win me or something. Right, then after the ISO image is generated you need to mount it onto VirtualBox. Uh, but of course, while this is working, um, you of course first need to install Windows Millennium Edition itself. I will not cover the installation of Windows Me because there are plenty of other guides about how to do that. So I already have an installed version prepared. So that's all that we'll need of this. Don't save. And let's then mount this onto one of the CD drives, virtual ones, and uh, yes, this, and let's start the virtual image itself. All right. So here we have Windows Millennium Edition running. Uh, go into the properties, go into the settings. This is a clean install. Nothing has been done aside from the actual installation. So you want to go to advanced, adapter, change, in order to update the video driver. So you could go above the very low resolution that Windows Millennium Edition defaults to. Uh, you can do an automatic search for a better driver if you have the uh, the CD with the drivers already mounted, although most of the time it doesn't actually find it. So then you need to specify the location, display a list of drivers, and have disk, then browse, and open the disk that you just made, Go here and choose one of the MB options. Uh, this is for video RAM. I typically don't allocate more than 32 megabytes, so I choose this. Okay, and it auto detects something compatible. So accept that, install the driver, and finish, and accept the prompt to reboot. Once it reboots, you'll get a higher resolution of this. And from here on, you can go open the CD that you just made and proceed with installation. Uh, you can try different things of installing. Um, of course, Windows Millennium Edition is a topic by itself. There are things like unofficial service packs you can install. Uh, there are DirectX updates for it and whatnot. It's not necessary, but maybe it can help with 
the stability. Because, as people probably know by now, Windows Millennium Edition is not exactly a paragon of stability. In any case, one of the things that you want to do is to copy over the Heroes of My Magic 1 images to the hard drive. It's not exactly mandatory. You could run it directly from the CD, but it gets fairly complicated and the system is more fragile, so I usually make a point of copying it on the virtual hard drive itself. Alright, then, while that is going on, you can install the Windows installer, because in order to install things, you need Windows installer. <laughs> Installception. So, this will take some time. Of course, input-output operations slow things down. Usually, the Windows installer is fairly quick with that. You need the Windows installer in order to install daemon tools. And once it's done processing, it prompts you to restart once again, but this is still copying, so I'll need to wait around a bit until it is finished. One more nice thing about Windows Millennium Edition, aside from the fact that it has AC97 drivers out of the box, is that it also has mouse pointer integration out of the box due to supporting USB. So, that's cool. And, of course, agree with all the prompts to reboot. That's always a good practice with these old Windows versions. And, now that it rebooted, install Daemon Tools. Install Accept the defaults, they're all good. Takes some time to install, but not all that much. Again, reboot. With hardware acceleration for virtualization, rebooting isn't much of an issue. Without it, it's a bit more annoying, but still. Then, once Daemon Tools are installed, you can mount the image that you have. So, I have it here. And from here you can install it. So, Heroes E, use the setup, and install. Once again, accept everything. It says installing DirectX, which is a bit uh, worrisome for me because Windows 95 DirectX is pretty old. That's why it might be a good idea to update DirectX, but then again, I'm not too sure if that does anything useful or not. I'm not even sure if it actually installs the DirectX version, or if it actually sees that the DirectX version is newer already and doesn't install it. But in any case, you can also install the patch for Heroes of Magic. Right. And that is everything. From here on, you have Heroes of Magic. All ready to go. With correct 24 bit, 44.1 kilohertz, lossless audio. And all of the other Windows version features that work as they should. So one thing to note about how the Windows version works is that if you press F4, it goes into window mode. Like that. 
and as you can see there are menus here and you can change the uh, the resolution here but it's actually not a very good idea because the way it works is that it uses it uses the nearest neighbor scaling instead of uh, something better than that so yeah there's a better way to do that so I'll show you how to scale it better one thing to note is that VirtualBox actually includes a scaler of its own you can press the host plus C in order to enable the scalable mode in which case you can simply scale it up as you wish which makes everything look much nicer scaled up unfortunately at the moment of writing the uh, the VirtualBox developers have not added an option to retain the aspect ratio so you either have to be pretty good at scaling manually or since I'm using KDE and KWIN I can add uh, special window rules to resize it automatically uh, but in the future they are planning to actually include the option for uh, keeping the aspect ratio so I guess that's something to look forward to but yes that was everything I wanted to cover and uh, thanks for watching I hope this was of some help, and I will see you all in my playthrough of Heroes Might and Magic 1, A Strategic Quest. See you all then. Later.